Hey, what's good? What's going on? And how are you today? Jim Alfano with the Brook Team and EXP Realty. Coming at you here with just kind of an intro to home inspections. Once we get a house that you like and we go on the contract after creating a fantastic offer, hopefully it's very competitive and gets the win. Uh, we're then faced with the potential of a home inspection, and I always encourage people to do a home inspection. And I'm not going to dive down into great detail here. I may do that with an interview with a home inspector soon, so keep an eye out for that. But here I just wanted to do an introduction to home inspections and a really high-level overview of the components of the home inspection, what that's made up of. So, you know, when you go on the contract, you'll see here, this is the most typical contract that I'm using and my team will use here. Section, section 17 is talking about the uh, inspections. Um, and you want to typically way, you know, elect to use the inspection and you're going to do termite, wood destroying, asbestos, radon, mold, typically everything. Uh, some houses have city water and sewer, so therefore they don't need a septic and a well inspection. Those are really the two variables, uh, but I always encourage everyone uh, to check everything else off. Now, the standard core of the home inspection is the home inspection check, and it's just going to look at the structure. It's going to look at uh, the roof, windows, doors, flooring, ceiling, you know, everything about the physical home and the structure of that home and the construction of that home. and and just to point out all the things, uh, compliance with FHA, uh, just any issues in there. And in the inspection report, remember, they're going to be some potentially big items. Hopefully not. But <laughs> don't forget, there's also going to be a lot of little items. And one of the things I like to tell people is even in a brand new construction, home inspectors will go and often find things that are imperfect with that home. So we don't have to be alarmed by the report. It's going to be an extensive report. It's going to have a lot of details. And hopefully most of the issues are small and minor and just almost like a, a to-do list of when you own the home, what to fix. Sometimes there are bigger issues that require negotiation, and we take that on a case-by-case -case basis. So um, in addition to the structure, we're going to inspect for termites and ants and rodents and any critters that might be in the house. Um, and this is an important thing because termites aren't beneficial. They're quite common, uh, but we can get rid of it. There are ways to mitigate the termites and other insects. Uh, it doesn't mean you run away from the house if there are cockroaches, but you definitely have to evict the cockroaches. <laughs> and uh, it just happens sometimes, you know, maybe... You know, there's, there's a lot. There's so many different stories out in the world. Um, we can get rid of the bugs. So... so. Asbestos, older homes. Um, oh, gee, I'm forgetting the year right now. I want to say seven. I'm not sure of the year, so I'm not going to say it. <laughs> I think it's in the 60s we stopped using it, but don't quote me on that. Anyway, asbestos is not used any longer, but in older homes, you will find asbestos in many different locations. You can see here it's pointing out things uh, that might have asbestos. Uh, the most common places I'd say that we still see it is in flooring tile, tiles, uh, ceiling tiles. Um, insulation on on things in the home, in the attic, and on the mechanicals if they're old enough. So there's a lot of places it can be, and definitely we need to talk about that with the home inspector. And if we find it, then we have to talk about how to uh, remove the asbestos. Okay, uh, there's different matters, and you just have to be very careful. You know, I understand uh, single exposure isn't immediately going to have those terrible <laughs> health consequences, right? Uh, so it's nothing to panic about. And if you leave asbestos in the home alone and don't touch it, it's not going to harm you. It's only harmful when you start moving it. So at the time that you want to remove the asbestos is when you really need to know how to do it properly. Okay. And we'll, we'll dive into that. If it comes an issue, just let me know. We'll talk about it. Talk to the home inspector, contractors, et cetera. All the professionals we're bringing. Mold is another one. It's something you don't want in your home, black mold. You don't want to breathe it in. You don't want your family breathing it in. And the fortunate thing about it is um, sometimes it's hidden in the walls and you might have to open it up to find it. But, you know, the sheetrock, typically, if it, like in this picture, you're going to get rid of the sheetrock. Okay. You're going to get down to the wood and the wood can be treated. You don't have to replace the studs and the beams. You're just going to eradicate the mold. Again, we consult with professionals if it is in the home, 
and, and work it that way. And we'll talk about it on a case by case basis, but definitely something to inspect for and be aware of. And radon. Oh, I have an article here to make sure I don't mess this up. Radon is a radioactive gas that you cannot smell, see, or taste. It comes from the natural breakdown of uranium that is found in nearly all soils. It typically moves up through the ground to the air above and into your home through cracks and other holes in the foundation. Your home traps radon inside where it can build up. Any home may have a radon problem. This means new and old homes, well-sealed and drafty homes at homes with or without basements. So. What we normally do is we're going to do a radon test. We're going to put two test kits for, for redundancy in the basement. They have to be there from between two and six days. We're going to pick up the test and we're going to read the results, send it out to the lab and know if we have radon problems. And we also test the water for radon because radon can get into the water. Um, so it, it, if the house has high levels of radon beyond the acceptable level, you put a radon mitigation system in and we can discuss the pros and the cons of uh, what that looks like, how much it costs and so on. And, you know, sometimes homes already have a radon mitigation system and then we'll do the test and make sure it's working. And an ongoing basis, they sell kits at Home Depot and Lowe's where you can put it in the basement, just like a carbon monoxide detector. You can have one sitting there for radon as well to make sure on an ongoing basis that the system is uh, functioning, that we don't have radon levels that are increasing. And even if it, when you test it's low, you could always buy one of those kits and keep it in the basement for, for good measure. And a lot of the new radon systems, when they're installed, they come with battery backup and they come with alarm systems if they're not working. So, you know, we, we could definitely mitigate that. And typically it's an issue in the basement and more of a bigger concern if you're going to finish and live in the basement that it's managed. Ah, jeez, sorry about that. My, uh, <laughs> I may edit that out. All right, the conventional septic system. They they really are going to be inspecting the functionality of the septic when they do the septic inspection, and they're going to put a camera down and look at the inside of the tank. Uh, the it's supposed to be pumped out when they list the property because you really can't effectively inspect the septic system. If it hasn't been pumped out recently, in general, systems need to be pumped out every two years. Otherwise, the buildup will become uh, problematic and it can be malfunctioning as a result of not being pumped. And it's just something to know, you know, prices to put a new septic system, if ever needed, are somewhere in the vicinity of twenty five to 50000 pending. It is an expensive item and it can potentially be a deal breaker. So hopefully when we inspect the septic system for you, it's in good working order. Uh, but there are occasions where it's not, and we just have to deal with that. And and it maybe it's where it's a big it's a big item, and depending upon where the house sits and everything, will depend on how we negotiate that and get through it. But I'm more than happy to help get a negotiation in place that still looks like a win win situation for both the buyer and the seller. Because at the end of the day, that's really important. We want a fair and equitable transaction. So when we come across major problems like this, we just have to work through it. And then we have the well water system. The water is coming from the ground. Um, and I'm not going to speak in, in real deep details about it. Like I said, I'd like to interview an inspector and someone that can talk more uh, from a professional perspective about these systems and what they look for. But they're going to taste, test the taste. They're going to test that the well water system is functioning, that it's got a good pressure. Uh, they're going to uh, send the water out to the lab to make sure there are no problems with the water, so on and so forth. So very important to do, obviously. <clears throat> Me personally, I like having a Berkey water filter, regardless of where I get my water from, and I run it through the Berkey. Um, that's me personally. It does take, you know, five minutes every day to, to replenish the water for my family, but um, it's, it's, a, it's a smart thing in my opinion. If ever there are other water issues, I could put water from a pond or a dirty puddle into my Berkey and come out with good drinking water. So I feel it's like an important thing to have, but <laughs> at the end of the day, it's a personal choice and, you know, definitely well water has to be tested. That's it for my slides. And I'm already taking too long, more than I wanted to with this intro. Let me know in the comments, if you would like to see a real interview with a property inspector to go a little more deeper into these steps and, uh, aspects of the inspection, the components of it. Happy to do that. As a matter of fact, it's been on my mind to do that, but I just wanted to share this quick intro and I hope you have a great day. Reach out if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. What I don't know and is out of my lane, I may give my opinion about. 
but then connect you with a professional who is the resource that we're going to rely upon. All right, folks, have a great day. Jim Alfano, 203-40-816-93.